even when we talk about the Naira, of course, we talk about the value that it has. And uh, everybody's looking for how to increase that value. Your purchasing power, the value of Naira. Obviously, they are related. Now, in Nigeria, the real estate market is anticipated to achieve a value of about $2.26 trillion by this year end among the various segments within the market. Residential real estate, however, holds the largest share with a projected market volume of 1.93 trillion Naira by 2024. So talking about where you can put your Naira and add value and increase your purchasing power. So how can you go about this? We have joining us in the studio, uh, Felicia Obona. She's the Chief Executive Officer of Bona Den Hall's uh, International. And she's talking to us on uh, investment opportunities in the real estate. Hi, Felicia. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I mean, we just talked about the Naira, the falling value of the Naira, which is a challenge for everybody. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> is, can the real estate offer a hedge against the falling Naira? Um, we, we, we are actually in a very peculiar situation right now. You know, the macroeconomics is not... Um, you have factors like inflation, devaluation, high interest rates. Those three things are bad mix. So when we look at what is happening right now, the question we're asking is, can the real estate hedge the Naira? I don't think only real estate can hedge the Naira. But there are ways we can go about still using real estate to hedge the Naira. I'll give you a very simple example. Okay, in, in November, a property was sold by one of my colleagues for 400 million Naira at uh, Ikoi. And he purchased it, but at that time, the value of the Naira was about 1,000 to $1. So we assume that that was 400 thousand US dollars that that individual um, invested. Coming to this year, that same property has increased in value to 550 million. But with the steep devaluation, we now have, if you convert it at 1,500, one, one, 1, we're looking at 366,000 US. You've lost 34,000 US dollars if you did that investment. But all hope isn't lost. There are still ways we can mitigate this problem, even with real estate. One of my uh, advices would be first, you know, try to diversify your portfolio. Do not only uh, invest in real estate. You can also buy some government bonds, especially foreign government bonds like the euro bond. Now, if you're going to get into real estate itself, do a little bit of homework. Do not panic buy. Because, pan you know, where every, everyone is on edge right now. So do not panic buy. You know, buy as an informed buyer. Get to know where the, the, the you, you still have some of those margins. And this is what I will advise you. Uh, try not to buy properties that have just been newly completed because they've priced in inflation into it. So the older properties are actually where you can still get some kind of value for your, for your investment. And at the same time, also do not buy properties that you will not get income from. Because even though there is appreciation, if you can also take advantage of the, the, uh, the rental income as well, you will be doing yourself a, a, a good favor. So it's a yes and a no, but diversify your portfolio. Do not only buy one type of property, go into a bit of commercial, and, and, and that would be my take. Yeah, so uh, I mean, uh, obviously that's why the report shows that the residential yes. uh, real estate investment is, is going to get bigger, yes. and it's a way to go. But uh, what about how can somebody cost... The fact that you get a property and you live there. Yes. How do you how do you make that profitable <laughs> to you? Because you have to live somewhere before you can now have an investment where you can rent out yes. you know, to others. Um, the, the, you, you can still buy a property. And that's why they always talk about income properties where you don't have to live in the whole property 
on the whole property, on the whole premises. You can sublet part of it. And this is not the time for you to be buying emotionally, you know, and say, no, my, I need a large room or I want a big bedroom and all. You have to buy as a business person. If you buy for your family, one thing that you will gain from is the appreciation of the property, regardless of the devaluation of the Naira. Yeah. Mm. But uh, I think one discouraging factors when it comes to real estate in Nigeria is the documentation yes. process. Yes. Um, you, you, you read about a lot of fights, yeah. uh, questions, yes. uh, fraud, mm -hmm. you know, especially because the document, document Station process is either too expensive or yes. too cumbersome. Yeah. Uh, you know, you have to go to government offices yeah. and settle government officials yeah. or so, you know. And, and, and this obviously can be a put off for an investor. Definitely, definitely. Um, we've come a long way with documentation. I must give the, some of the state governments kudos. I know of Lagos State, they've invested quite an amount of money in digitization, but we're not there yet. You know, a simple example for if you if you wanted to do a search on your property, you go to the land registry, you apply for the search and they put you in an office where you use their computers. Some of these things can can be improved upon. There are so many stakeholders that need that information. The banks need it to approve loans. Architects need it to design. Are you an architect? Yes, yes I am an architect. Share with us your experience. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Share with us your experience. Yeah. Reality. Yeah, it's, it's, it's daunting because to get simple information out sometimes, you need to go through several layers of, you know, individuals and a lot, a lot of bureaucracies. But I said, like I said, we have improved and there's still room for improvement. You know, so that simple example you, we can get all these stakeholders to register with the lands department and they can subscribe from their offices. They get access to this information. You know, another uh, very, very difficult period is when you are purchasing or acquiring property here. What happens is this, you sign a title, uh, a, a deed of assignment, you know, it's signed between the two parties and the seller, is as co collects the money up front, even without the co governor's consent being, you know, finalized. And uh, the, uh, the buyer is encumbered with finalizing those documents. So when, uh, in a place like South Africa, when you buy a property, the seller does not get a dime until that property is transferred to the new owner. The, the money is put in a trust account with um, what you call it, it's, it's earning um, interest rates. But it's going to be difficult to do that even here because we do not have set times for these processes. We all know that, you know, the set time back, back there is uh, a month to three months. So you, you know what you're getting into. There's also a lot of ignorance where the public, we don't even know how to go about these processes. You have to always liaise with agents and go, so I'm hoping that even as we, we are trying our best to make it easier, we fast track it because the pain is quite enormous. Yeah, and yeah. discouraging for investors. Yes. And then you also have this group of um, um, people. You know, there, there are some businesses now, um, the real estate companies. Yes. I, I know you must have heard of a recent one yeah. where I think mostly those people, well, some of them, have gone into the contract yes. of um, uh, what do they call it? Installment yes. payments, yes. you know, and then they're given a time when they would have hit a certain goal yes. and then they'll be uh, given a location. Yes. And then there's, there's a breakdown yeah. in that agreement. Yes. And, you know, a lot of these people, they're not the big and mighty. Obviously the, the rich guys would just drop their money and, and get these are yeah. people who are low income earners. Definitely. And so they don't know who will fight for them. Uh, mm -hmm. And some of them just want to have a home of their own yes. so that when they're not strong enough yes. to you know, go to work and, yes. and pay rent, they will have a place to lay their head. And you, and you hear of such heartbreaking stories yeah. and another discouraging <laughs> factor. Yes, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a victim of something similar. 
where I purchased a property somewhere in Lekki for 4.5 million, just the land, a few years back. And I, was, I had a, received a phone call early this year that I needed to raise 20 million. <laughs> Tell me about <laughs> it. You know, for a value of, so, so it, it is still all about legislation because this is, these are some of the worrisome things that the people in the diaspora have problems with where you get into a, a contract and when it is time to deliver, then we have all these hiccups. A lot of these companies that uh, started this development should have insured those uh, contracts. But what we're also faced with right now is a bit, it, it's, it's, it's enormous and I'm, I'm not sure a lot of us have ever prepared for what we're going through right now in the country. Mm. So it is, it is a deterrent, definitely. And it sounds like a long way to go um, because uh, if you go into a contract and you're going, uh, you don't have a lawyer, you don't have the government backing, yes. all you have is a receipt from the seller, yes. anything can happen. Yes. I mean, you've been told that to add 20 million. 20 million. 20 million. Yeah. I don't know, what, what are you going to do about that? Well, well uh, you, are, you are an elite. No, so no, no, I, I don't have 20 million. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the, the two, I have two options. Uh, usually I do not take the legal route because I can't afford it. It, it ends up costing you a little bit more. You've already and lost a lot money. of time. Yes. So it's either you, you cut your losses and run or you, you, you sell off plan. So there are, there are people that the value of that land today is about 25 million. So I would rather look for someone that can pay 25 million for that property and sell it. So you have to look for a smart way to survive. That's probably That's what I'm going to do. Unfortunately, it's a Nigerian <laughs> thing, but yes. there's a breach of contract there. There is. There you is. Know, you have your rights there. Yeah. We should be protected. Yes. And there's nowhere to go to. Because That's where the documentation loopholes are in, where we need to put a lot of things in place. Because a lot of people have come up with schemes, got some people's money ahead of time, but now there, is no, there are no consequences for what they have done, you know. A lot of work to be done everywhere. We're talking of the Naira discouraging. We're yes. talking of why the discouraging God. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, for Thank you so much for joining yes. us uh, yes. this afternoon. Felicia Ogona, the Chief Executive Officer of Bernard Denzel Horse International. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for your time. It was a pleasure here.